So the important question is whether spending time in prison is criminogenic or rehabilitative. If we send someone to prison, will it cause them to commit more crime or will it rehabilitate them? And in particular, will it cause them to commit more crime? And what about the labor market impacts? Well, what I want to tell you today is that if you spend the money wisely in a prison system and are willing to invest enough in the right programs, you can actually make prison be a positive experience. You can actually reduce recidivism, increase employment, and it largely happens through increased uh, investment in job training programs while in prison. So in the U.S., in a county in Texas, you find that when you go to prison, you come out, you're a hardened criminal, you commit more crime, and you're less employed. So what explains the difference between Norway and the U.S.? Well, let me tell you a few things about Norway. And by the way, Norway and the Scandinavian countries are very much like the Netherlands in terms of how much they invest in their prisons, the type of education and training programs, the amount of money they spend on prisons. They're the highest in Europe. So in the U.S., Less money is spent on prisons. In the Netherlands and Scandinavia, more money is spent on prisons. What are they doing with this money? So in Norway, there are two types of prisons. One is called a closed prison, and that's what you're used to seeing on TV, you know, barbed wire, no one can escape. Uh, there are also open prisons, and in an open prison, it looks a lot more like a dormitory. You want life to resemble the outside as much as possible. You don't want to stigmatize people. So if they've committed a minor crime, don't put them in a harsh setting. And indeed, another difference between uh, Norway and the US is you also get your own room. You're not allowed to be put in a room with 50 other prisoners because we're out of space. So uh, you get a much less harsh prison condition, a little more safety, a little more personal safety while you're in prison. I've also already mentioned that there's a lot more education and training programs in Norway, which is costly but seems to have a return. And then the other big difference between Europe and the US is the time spent in prison. Now remember, the US incarcerates about 700 people per 100,000 population, has them in prison. Europe has about 100. So the US incarceration rate is eight times higher. Netherlands and Norway, all about the European average. So there's far fewer people in jail. Why is that? Uh, largely it's a function of the length of the sentence. So in the US, people serve prison time for about three years for an average sentence. In the Norway, it's about five to six months. So with a much shorter prison spell, it's true that you're spending much more while the person's in prison. So per prisoner year, you're spending a lot more in uh, maybe up to six times more in the Netherlands and Norway. But per prisoner, you actually spend about the same because they're in for a much shorter period of time. So the other magic that might be happening here is that you're not in prison forever. Why would that matter from an economics perspective? Well, if you're in prison for three years, your human capital is depreciated. It's pretty clear you have a big gap on your employment resume. It's, it's harder to recover, potentially. If you're out for, remember, the average is five months. That means some people are in for two months, some people are in for eight. It's easier to recover and be on the job market. Um, and so those are some of the things that I think help drive this difference between uh, Norway, and the Netherlands, and the US. Um, so what does it mean for policy? You know, that's an involved question. What we really think is true here is why did the rise in incarceration start happening both in the US and in Norway? Well, there was a very influential report called the Martinson Report in 1974. This report said that nothing works. It basically concluded you should throw prisoners in jail and throw away the key because you cannot reform people. Prison is just going to be, you, you can't change who's a criminal. And so a lot of people gave up, and that accounts for this dramatic rise in most European and U.S. countries, is we kind of gave up on prisoners. What we want to view our uh, research to kind of give an insight into is this is a proof of concept. If you spend the right amount of money and are willing to invest heavily in your prison system, you actually can make prison be a positive influence rather than a negative influence. But once again, it can't be done for free, so it will cost some money. And what the exact combination is of programs is something we're still learning more about. Clearly, employment's part of it. Clearly, job training's part of it. But there could be many other uh, things, too, including prison conditions. But the point is, is that prisoners are not lost causes, and that spending the right amount of money could actually change uh, things for, for ex-convicts. The last point, though, is returning to the idea that if you've previously been employed, prison is not such a good idea. 
you might want to think about allowing people to have, say, ankle monitoring and being able to continue to work at their jobs if they have a job because we know that going to prison disrupts that employment uh, continuity.